some wise man once said imitation is the best form of flattery but what if someone imitates his strongest enemy his arch nemesis his bet noir will that still be flattery a coincidence a both well in case of the grand old man of american politics and the accidental president joe biden nothing is coincidental or as joe would put it one does he tree he came off the tree winnie the pooh then place in a very that thing and to her tree somebody's making noise you came that does sorry i made this one up but speaking gibberish is sometimes fun hi and welcome this is tfi global the foreign affairs and geopolitical analysis arm of the tfi media group and i am atul mishra the founder of the tfi media group in this video i will tell you about the excellent plagiarism skills of joe biden and how he could be trump's biggest fan remember all the promises with joe biden made during the presidential campaign trail last year biden claimed that the us lost global leadership under the trump administration and that biden would bring in a team of experienced administration who would restore american leadership after coming to power biden proclaimed america is back well america was right where it was on the map on the planet and in global affairs it was not like america decided to not exist for some time who is writing this guy's speeches anyway so despite promising a radical change in america's foreign policies biden is simply repackaging trump era policies and calling them his own to be fair to the man he did want to make some changes in foreign policy but american allies restrained him poor joe restrained at oval office by pelosi and harris restrained at home by dr jill and restrained by allies outside america anyway let's see how the biden administration is repackaging and rebranding trump era policies for the sake of convenience and from the traditional american foreign policy the globe is to be divided into four parts number 1 the middle east now this has to be the most complicated region for any us president trump however kept it simple he kept his promise of not waging any new wars in the region throughout his tenure president trump also relied on his key allies israel and the arabs and by the end of his term he also managed to broker peace deals dubbed abraham accords between some arab nations and israel his policies were calculated to create a united front against iran which led to the maximum pressure policy in order to rein in tehran's nuclear ambitions biden on the other hand started off in a clumsy and awkward manner the sitting us president couldn't look above his hatred for trump and started backstabbing israel's prime minister benjamin netanyahu who is considered a close ally of trump Biden also tried to strong arm the Arabs with plans to snub Saudi Arabia's de facto leader Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Also in line with his former boss Obama's policies, Biden tried to go soft on Iran. But it did not take long before things started moving back to normal. Israeli pressure has forced Biden to behave and maintain a safe distance from Tehran. The US president also felt compelled to reaffirm the US Israel bond homi. Also, at least on an official level, Biden backs the Trump era Abraham Accords. In the Middle East, Biden is doing what Trump was doing. Biden administration's remarks against Saudi Arabian crown prince are perhaps the only exception, but that too can fade away very quickly. Moving on to the next region, the Indo-Pacific. Trump's Indo-Pacific policy is what made him unique and special. After ages we had a US president who showed the intent to wage a trade war against China and devise mechanisms for containing the paper dragon. Trump revived American influence in the Indo-Pacific by championing the free and open Indo-Pacific policy. He also gave unparalleled importance to the Quad, an informal strategic forum comprising Japan, the US, India and Australia. Biden couldn't do things very differently even though he did make a try. Initially, Biden was in a mood to go soft on Beijing. He even went as far as downplaying the Uyghur concentration camps in China occupied Xinjiang and advocating a secure and prosperous Indo-Pacific as against Trump's free and open Indo-Pacific. Yet the Quad didn't allow Biden to go too far. Today, Biden feels compelled to things like sending US Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin to India. 
making plans to host Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga and speaking in terms of, wait for it, free and open Indo-Pacific. In the recent Quad summit, Biden was even seen promoting what can be described as Trump's line. He said, we know our commitments. Our region is governed by international law, committed to all the universal values and free from coercion. But I'm optimistic about our prospect. Now let's visit the third region. That's Europe or the Atlantic. Trump was a pragmatist who overcame the nostalgia of the cross-Atlantic ties symbolized by NATO. He made a conscious move to shift his focus from the Atlantic to the Indo-Pacific. The strategic world order is moving from the Atlantic to the Indo-Pacific because the US-Russia rivalry is getting replaced by US-China rivalry. Moreover, German Chancellor Angela Merkel's refusal to accept Trump's global leadership accelerated the growing anachronism in the cross-strait relations between the US and Europe. Biden, on the other hand, slammed Trump for losing America's global leadership and abandoning the old allies. Biden used to claim that he would reinvigorate the US-EU ties. He even tried to play the Russia card and revive the NATO. But the real issue is that even a bigger part of Europe wants to become independent and self-sufficient. French President Emmanuel Macron champions the cause of strategic autonomy and he is showing the ability to lead Europe independent of big powers like China and the USA. Microsoft's ex-chairman turned philanthropist, yeah right, Bill Gates once famously remarked, 640 KB ought to be enough memory for anybody. He was brutally roasted for that. But now we know that quote was ahead of its time as Biden completely forgot his love for US-EU ties or probably the data exceeded his 640 KB memory threshold. The US-Europe relations were always supposed to lose steam, so Biden can't really make any big changes anyway. Now let's quickly summarize rest of the world. Trump had a simple policy for the world. Everyone has to decide for themselves and the US is done policing the world. And Trump himself had a poll promise to fulfill, bringing back the American troops. This is what he actually did in countries like Afghanistan by finalizing a withdrawal plan. Biden, of course, belongs to the interventionist lobby. But this has more to do with how things are inside the US. An average American doesn't fancy an administration that uses taxpayers' money for keeping US troops in trenches far away from their homes, waging new wars and sending in troops just to keep the military-industrial complex running is too unpopular move even for someone like Biden. So Biden will wage no new wars even if he wants to. He will ultimately rebrand and sell Trump's peace initiatives as his own. Biden came in with a lot of vigor, but less than two months down the line, he is forced to continue from where Trump left. So that brings us to the original question. What if one imitates his strongest enemy, his arch nemesis, his bete noire? Will that still be flattery or coincidence or both? Well, let me just say Biden hates Trump and hate is not the opposite of love. The opposite of love is apathy or indifference. Hate is a strong love of the opposite polarity. Biden may be Trump's secret admirer. Goodbye.